Hello, BookTube. Well, we're at it again. Grammaticus Books and I have returned for another pair of top 10 bro-tube movie lists. Uh, we've done a whole bunch of different genres. This time around, we're doing action movies. And this is a little different for me because ordinarily when we make these videos, of course, he posts before I do because he films, I think he films his videos before Friday. Uh, but Ordinarily in the past, I watch his video so that in my own video, I can not only give you my list, but also mock his list. <laughs> it's just a kind of a friendly gesture on my part. But this time around, I'm intentionally not doing that. Because I think he and I were a little bit vague in our weekly shirtless Skype session. I think we were a little bit vague on the rules. All of our previous videos, we have... We have been fairly careful about what counts and doesn't on the list. And I, I don't know, maybe I missed a bit, an email or maybe I just wasn't paying all that much attention, but it doesn't strike me that we were all that careful this time around. I know that we stipulated uh, that it must not be, for instance, a Marvel Comics movie and that it must not be a war movie because we've done war movies, <laughs> that it should be action for action's sake. So no science fiction, no fantasy, no Marvel superhero movies, no war. But I'm not sure that we ever enumerated all those, and I'm not sure if there aren't more qualifications that we should have done. Uh, so I don't know what I'll be finding in his video. I'm more curious than ever to know if we overlap about anything. I'm going to give you my top 10 action movies, and also as a kind of a runner-up, uh, a sequence, an action sequence that really is superb. But I don't know, guessing... I'm guessing here that if we overlap, it will be on one movie. There's one movie that will make this list pretty much no matter who is making the list. But I could be wrong even about that. So I want to start off uh, in 2014. And that's going to recur throughout this list. Most, I think all of the, the items on my list are no older than 25 years. There's a real good reason for that. <laughs> because it's not just that I'm a super hottie who's only 28. It's that most of what we consider to be classic action movies have longures. They have long, dull spots where the character is driving around in an outdated gas lug a guzzling car, or where they're just talking with some other fourth-rate actor about whatever. Uh, it, when you think of older, classic action movies, it's amazing how much of the movie you block out of your mind. You are remembering one action sequence, maybe two action sequences. Whereas in the last 25 years, action movies have changed. They have become more charged with action. They have become more nonstop. I believe that change came about from video games. The, the idea of a video game filtering in to the movie world. Uh, we're making action the action genre more of a rarefied genre on its own rather than this is a, some sort of crime novel or a relationship novel in which some action takes place. That explains the recent drift of a lot of my movies. And the, the first one I'm starting off with is 2014. It's directed by Antoine Fuqua, and it is The Equalizer, starring Denzel Washington. In a classic gimmick for this kind of movie of, of a man with an incredibly violent past, a man who is extremely adept at killing, who has left that life behind, and the depravity of the modern world draws him back into it. Uh, Denzel Washington was famous. Uh, he was, he's a great actor, one of the greatest actors of our time. He's one of the only great actors on my list today. Uh, but he was famous at the time for, you know, I consider every project to be its own thing, and I throw myself into it. So, of course, I won't ever do sequels. He's now done a number of sequels to Equalizer, and they are all great. They are all fantastic action sequences. In fact, one of my favorite action sequences isn't even in Equalizer number one. Uh, the famous uh, car scene where he, where he is driving a car and has to fend off an, an assassin while driving the car in downtown Boston traffic. Uh, I'm going to talk... I'm going to mention just... Equalizer 1, I could easily put Equalizer 2 and Equalizer 3, and Equalizer 4 on this list. Easily, I could. But I'll just for this entry, I'll include number 1. And then for number 9, we're going back about as far as I go. I think I brush into the 90s. But we're going back all the way to the year 2000. And this is Ang Lee's Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, which might be pushing the envelope a little 
on the parameters that Grammaticus and I did not discuss, because people can't really run on treetops. <laughs> so it could, it could be that this is fantasy. Uh, I don't know. I don't think of it that way. I marvel at this movie. I When I watched it originally in 2000, I had no idea what I was seeing. Uh, and I... I marvel at it still. It is. It has not lost anything. It is every bit as amazing as it was. And it's non-stop surreal action. So I'm definitely going to include it. Then we go back to 1996. This is... I don't think I go back into the 80s at all. And certainly not any earlier than that. I would, I'm would. i guessing here. But I'm guessing that Grammaticus books will include some clunky old chestnuts from earlier than the 1990s. I, there's one in particular that I, I, I will finish up. I'll finish up with a guess at the end of this list. There's one in particular that I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's going to be on his list. It's not going to be on mine. But we'll go back to 1996. This is directed by Rob Cohen, and this is a movie called Daybreak that I don't think gets the attention that it deserves in the oeuvre of Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> this is a movie about a, a weird series of events in a in a in a, a highway tunnel in New York that causes a gigantic catastrophic explosion that closes off the tunnel. And Sylvester Stallone plays a character who was once in charge of tunnel safety. He has been ousted out of his job, but he still has all of his experience in shepherding a group of people who were trapped underground to daylight. And I think it counts as an action movie. It, you, you never slow down in the course of the movie, and there are all kinds of great bits to it. You never know which peril this group is going to encounter next. And also there's a priceless sequence where there are these two gigantic metal turbines, and they are stopped for the moment, but they are going to start up again slowly, but then faster and faster, and Sylvester Stone has to get his way through them before, they, before they're spinning so fast that they Cuisinart him. But there are all sorts of other moments as well. I, I think I'm fair in including this, because I think it counts as an action movie. It certainly doesn't count as anything else. It's not a crime movie. It's not science fiction. And it has all kinds of outlandish action sequences, including the final one the final action sequence, the thing that actually ends the movie, where I saw it and thought, okay, well, that was really, really good, although, uh, come on, that would kill them both. <laughs> that sequence would kill them both. That would kill any human. Uh, little did I know in 1996 that I was going to get the Fast and, Fur and Furious franchise where the characters are literally, in every moment, in every action sequence, they are in, they are in situations that would easily kill a human being. It's just, there's no physics in the Fast and Furious franchise, so you don't have to worry about it. The daylight pushes that envelope. And I think it is probably the only... It and Crouching, Tri Crouching, Dragon, Hidden, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon are probably the only two movies on this list that push the envelope for me. I think all the rest are fairly standard action stuff. Just the best of the best. So we'll move on to number seven. We'll go to 2018. This is Mission Impossible Fallout, which was directed by Chris, Christopher McQuarrie. So this is not the first Mission Impossible movie, and not at all. I, I think it, I lost count when they stopped numbering them, but I think it might be number four, or something like that. But it is, to my, they, they get better as they go along. The Mission Impossible movies, Tom Cruise's Mission Impossible movies get better as they go along. They get more and more amazing as they go along in terms of pure action enjoyment. There was something about this one. I think it was Henry Cavill. It was the presence of Henry Cavill in the movie. As an ally who, if you've seen the trailer, you know, doesn't stay an ally. He turns out to be a villain. And it works wonderfully, I think. Henry Cavill has an, uh, an effortlessly physical charisma on the screen. Doesn't seem to have to work at it, and it goes with him wherever he goes. And... Does that or does that not describe Tom Cruise, who's old enough to be Henry Cavill's father? I think that might be it, that you're just getting double the Cruise effect in this movie. Also, there are a couple of sequences in the movie. Oh, my God. I know when we talk about action movies, we're largely talking about sequences. What I'm talking about in this video is which movies stitch together the sequences the most consistently so that you're not wading through some long... Uh, interminable, I, you know, I'm fresh from my divorce, but I might give love another try scene. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that at all. And that's in one of the movies that I'm talking about, but it, nobody wants that. Uh, then this ne The next one is Bizarre. 
Uh, it's it, we're going back to 1991. This is Catherine Bigelow. This is Point Break, <laughs> and it's it's downright bizarre. The more I thought about it, though, the more I could not leave it off. I'm sure that you know the urban legend of the movie, even if you don't know the movie, where it's uh, Keanu Reeves is a a an government agent, and he is looking to sh- to he is looking to break down a gang of, of robbers. Who are also surfers, <laughs> who are led by Patrick Swayze, uh, and, and uh, Keanu Reeves's police partner. You know, doomed. The police partner in these movies is always doomed. He's always going to die. It's Gary Busey, and the the scene in which Gary Busey's character buys the farm. You, I was convinced that Gary Busey was actually playing himself because even in the audio in the movie. It's easily possible to hear the, the the gunman coming up behind him, but he doesn't hear it. <laughs> it's, it's, they didn't bother to take out the audio. It's obvious that it's just Gary Busey tripping, and so, so he doesn't hear death coming upon him. But I'm talking here about stitched together sequences, and there are amazing stitched together sequences in this movie, and they pick up as they go along. There is a chase sequence, for instance. An on foot chase sequence. If any of you have seen the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's all moving point of view camera, and at one point, at one point, somebody throws a dog at the camera, throws a pit bull at the camera. You're breaking through doors and walls and whatnot, and also a totally ridiculous scene that is nevertheless nail biting. That involves skydiving, where where Keanu Reeves' character has to jump out of a plane without a parachute. <laughs> He's that desperate to get his man that he has to jump out of a plane without a parachute. Uh, I think those things count. They definitely It's definitely an action movie. There's no way you could say that it's not. And we'll stick with Keanu Reeves for the next movie, which is in 2014. So that's 30 years after. Uh, that's kind of... Or 20 years after that. No, 30 years after. That's kind of amazing. This guy could have a career so long. I'm, this is John Strahelski, and this is 2014 John Wick, the first John Wick movie. If, if ever there was anything on this list that demonstrates what I'm talking about, it would either be the Equalizer movies or it would be the John Wick franchise that demonstrates what I'm talking about, about how the 21st century gets action movies in a way that the 20th century could not do, I believe because of the, the ubiquity of video games. Suddenly the people who are going to the theater are wanting that adrenaline goose every 10 minutes, not every hour out of two hours. <laughs> they want, they want, they don't want two adrenaline gooses in one, in one dirty Harry movie. They want adrenaline goose every two, every 10 minutes. It's in these later franchises that you get that. And John Wick is the same thing as the equalizer. It's the same gimmick. Uh, an incredibly violent man with an incredibly violent set of skills to, to quote Liam Neeson from another great, uh, relatively modern action movie. Uh, who is called out of a peaceful existence by the vileness of the present world and has to exact vengeance. And of course, in the John Wick movies, just like in the Denzel Washington Equalizer movies, the modern world has almost nothing in the way of resistance. When these old gargoyles of violence are reawakened, they're almost irresistible. The, The big climactic scene at the end of John Wick, the first John Wick movie, isn't technically possible. It would take years of reconnaissance to get it to happen. John Wick does it without anyone noticing that he's doing it in the course of 15 minutes. But it works. That's the key here is that it works. Then I want to give you a double header when it comes to action movies. I want to talk about one of the great action movie directors of modern times. First, we will go back to 1988. This is the oldest movie on this list. The director is John McTiernan, who is going to have the next entry too. And of course, for 1988, I'm talking about Die Hard. And this is the movie I firmly believe will be on Grammaticus's own list. If nothing else is, if we don't overlap anywhere else, we'll overlap with this one. And that's not just because we both love the 80s. <laughs> that's because this is just an unbeatable movie. I went and saw this in the theater when it was pre- when it premiered. And I walked out of the theater thinking, people are going to be watching this for 100 years. People are going to be loving this as long as there is reproducible video technology of any kind. This is just a classic. It's just, it's always a dodgy thing for a critic to say. I try to avoid it, to call anything an instant classic. But I watched it in the theater and thought, this this is not putting a single foot wrong. This is absolutely perfect from start to finish in terms of its action, but in also in terms of its pacing. And it's, it's memorable bits. There are memorable bits all throughout it, from literally the beginning to literally the end. When you are on a plane, 
And you encounter turbulence? Tell me you aren't going to think about taking your shoes off and gripping the floor with your toes. Tell me you aren't going to think about that. <laughs> While you ask for a miracle, I give you the FBI. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, it's Alan Rickman doing Alan Rickman. He is absolutely fantastic in the movie. It's, there, there is a big reveal at the end. There's a surprise happy ending. There's, a, the, there's murders aplenty all throughout. Just I can't praise it high enough. I know that it will be on Grammaticus's list. I don't know if we'll overlap on anything else. Then the next one I want to give you, my number three, is also John uh, John McTiernan. This is from 1999, so a decade later, and this is The 13th Warrior, starring Antonio Banderas. Adapted from a novel called The Ages of the Dead by Michael Crichton, it's the, it asks the question, what could the real historical basis for Beowulf be, if there is one? What, what is a real-world story we could tell about Beowulf that only looks supernatural, but where nothing supernatural actually happens? And it works from beginning to end. It, it has amazing scenes in it. It has more heart and heft than Die Hard is. I, I myself think that it's a better movie. It doesn't matter. Die Hard is... Classics don't have to be good, right? They, 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 they're classic because they hit the zeitgeist, not because, not because they're the best thing the director's ever done. Tell me. Aside from film bros, who is going to claim that Jaws is a better movie than Schindler's List? Nobody is going to claim that. And le- except for film bros, nobody is. It doesn't matter. Jaws is a classic because if you hit the zeitgeist, that's all, you, that's all you can do. I don't think that Jaws will be on Grammaticus's list. I think that the Spielberg will show up on his list. I think I can also predict that. But not with 100% certainty like I can with Die Hard. The 13th Warrior is amazing. And the, the talk about set pieces... The final set piece of that movie is something that I subject every visitor who comes here for wine and calzones. Once the wine has been flowing, Steve will put you through that scene, and you won't regret it. <laughs> so, so it's two uh, John McTiernan's that I want to do side back to back like that. Then the next one is two thousand five. Uh, the director is uh, Louis Leterrier. I have jotted down. I'm not sure that I know that director at all, but it's it's Unleashed. It's Jet Li and Bob Hoskins. And Jet Li is uh, literally leashed. He literally has a collar. He is the the attack dog of the crime boss played by Bob Hoskins and is just loosed on victims whenever Bob Hoskins wants. It leads to some amazing fight choreography, just incredible fight choreography. Although not as incredible as we're going to be getting to on this list. It's still wonderful. And it's also another element of action movies that uh, disqualifies anything from the 60s, anything from the 70s, almost anything from the 80s, uh, is that it has to be rewatchable. It can't be that you just watch it you know, for the one thing. It also can't be that you watch it fast-forwarding to the scenes you like, which rules out all Charles Bronson. It rules out all of the Dirty Harry movies. If you can't fast forward, if you if you have to enjoy the movie from start to finish, it rules out all of that sludgy stuff from the pre-video game days. <laughs> and Unleashed is incredibly rewatchable. So I use that as an element as well. Uh, and, and that definitely applies to my number one, the greatest action movie of them all. We go back to 2006, and this is 300 by Zack Snyder. It's certainly the most visually stylish of anything. On this list, I think it beats even Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon in terms of stylish visuals, but it's also a nonstop action, intimate one-on-one, armies against armies, whatever whatever scale of action you want. Just uh, it's a home run, uh, to use the the hackneyed film bro <laughs> phrase. It's a home run. It is, in my opinion, the best sustained action movie of them all. Uh, but when it comes to the sustained part, that underlines underlines the fact that that a lot of times there'll be great sequences in an otherwise lackluster action movie. Uh, I could have named Kung Fu Hustle here. It's a perfect example of that. There are two sequences in that movie, but the rest of it, no. I might also mention here another thing that uh, if, if it isn't on Grammaticus's list, then I'm sure he considered Big Trouble in Little China, but only for a couple of sequences, not for the whole of the movie. Uh, and when it comes to sequences, I couldn't leave off my list without giving a kind of honorable mention to 2014. The director is Matthew Vaughn. The movie is Kingsman, starring Colin Firth. It's a terrific movie. Just all of it is. But there is an action sequence. I'm sure that if you know the movie, you know what I'm going to say. It isn't the one that you've seen. If you've, if you've come here to Hyde Cottage for Wine and Calzone, you have been subjected to one particular scene in a pub 
manners maketh man. <laughs> Do you know what that means? Allow me to teach you. <laughs> it's not that. I love showing that to people when I'm pickled and they're bored, but that's not the scene. The scene I'm talking about is the church scene, of course. And if you know the movie, you'll know the scene I'm talking about. And it is a sustained Verdi opera of graphic, grotesque, incredibly inventive violence. Just, it is an amazing film sequence. It must have taken a nightmare to storyboard it and then make it happen. It's... <laughs> I don't have words for it. That scene had, I had to end with that. I could have ended with a whole bunch of other scenes, but that, the church scene in the first Kingsman movie is a masterpiece of action on film. So I had to, I had to end with that. Now I'm going to wrap up this video and go over and look at Grammaticus books. I have, this is the first time I've ever done this. I've, I've always, I like to scrutinize his choices and mock him and shame him for them, but I didn't do that this time because I'm so curious given our, our parameters, whether or not we'd pick anything the same. I feel 100% certain that Die Hard is on his list. One movie that I'm relatively certain is on his list that isn't on mine is The Warriors. Because <laughs> that is going to be, if you're, if you're a stereotypical dude, that's going to be on your top action movie list, even though it most certainly doesn't belong there. <laughs> but, but I could be wrong. He could surprise me. <laughs> he, could, uh, he could offer Ben-Hur instead of the Warriors. You never know. I think there's a good chance. The only one I'm sure of is Die Hard. Uh, but anyway, that is the, those are the best action movies of all time. And we'll be back. We'll come up with another category and do this again. Uh, so I'll see you then. Thank you, Booktube.